Well, hey everybody, hi. It's Becky from Power Tools with Thread and you are in our Stitchuation Room. This is a Monday through Friday virtual stitching retreat where uh, anything goes in here. We meet at 7 a.m. Central live and we always have a replay that you can watch if you like. So we've got a lot of folks here in the chat already. So good to see you guys. All the regulars are here. You want to be a regular? Chime in and say, hi, I'm new. We have a welcoming committee. They will take good care of you. We also have a virtual kitchen, just like at any quilting retreat. You can wander over there. I'm seeing all kinds of stuff here. You purchase, what do we got? Somebody's doing, you guys, the comments are flying up. You purchased Amy Bradley's Merry Christmas and Happy Halloween. Good. Annie's going to really try to get her creative juices flowing so she can get some things done this year. Good for you, Annie. That's fantastic. So you're ready to learn a new skill, and that's great. Yeah, we had a really, really good live yesterday until like the last three minutes when my microphone went, <laughs> it decided it didn't have any more juice in the battery. That's okay. That happens. Yeah, it is what it is. It's live, you guys. The lady who won, I heard about the lady who won from uh, Deb, who won the um, Anita Good Design. I have not heard from the other lady yet. Maybe she didn't hear me give her my email address. So if that's you, send me an email. It's, um, let me get the note. Valerie wrote me a note. Hold on. It's uh, Maggie Moore. So Maggie, it's, uh, send me an email, powertoolswiththread at outlook.com and uh, give me your mailing address and I will get that in the mail to you. I'll also take a look for Maggie in our Facebook group. How do you get the hoop picture in, in Brilliance, please? Oh, the picture of the hoop. Uh, Alda, I got your email and I want to thank you. That was so very, very nice. So very nice of you. Um, in in Brilliance, go, I'll show you. Let me share my screen. Hold on. I'm gonna put, here, y'all, give the video a thumbs up. On your way into the kitchen, hit the thumbs up button if you wouldn't mind. I'd appreciate that very much. What I got on here? Thread. I got thread on me. Go figure. <laughs> Let me show you how you can see the hoop. I need to launch in brilliance here. I just upgraded. You should upgrade. Uh, need to go to the Embrilliance website. Go to their downloads page and download it again. Make sure it's closed. You don't have it open on your system. And um, then just launch it and it should update just fine. You just got to double click on that download and it'll walk you through the prompts. Super simple. Don't have to be a brain surgeon to do that or a nerd. Um, let me show you. It's, it's always the simplest thing, isn't it? It's, it's like, oh, that was easy. Yeah. It's really simple. You're looking for this picture of the hoop right here, right? So, um, I believe that's what you're asking. So you have to come up here to view. Let me make this bigger. So you guys aren't seeing all the stuff go through, uh, come up here to view the view menu and click on, make sure draw hoop is checked. Just check that and that'll be fine. That'll work. Easy peasy. I'm sitting over here today because I have got to get binding on my quilt on the long arm that I, it's on, I've got so many quilts that I have got to get quilted with my new King Quilter 2 from Sew Machines Plus. So I was going to do that today if we get around to it. So I hope that helped. But yeah, Elda, that was the nicest, nicest email. Thank you so much. You are such a dear. I truly appreciate that. I have the nicest viewers in all of YouTube land. I was listening to a maker the other day and she was complaining. She was complaining totally about a, uh, invisible, no, silent subscribers. She was talking about silent subscribers. So what happens is, is she created a video. Uh, she has, she has like almost 200,000 subscribers. But those subscribers um, subscribed to her channel because she was doing like needlework 
And then the next couple videos she put out cooking videos or remodeling videos or something like that. And nobody watched her, but they didn't unsubscribe. So her, her channel line of analytics goes down, down, down on view time. And she was fussing about that. And then that's neither here nor there. But then she said something to the effect of, you people leave me mean, mean comments when I don't give you the content you're expecting. And I was like, ah, oh, thanks, Mary. That's very nice. You're so thoughtful. I can get some more so tights. Yay. <laughs> so, oh, you meant the Janome hoop that you can orient the design in the hoop, please. Oh. Well, go into your preferences, the little yellow folder at the top. And tell it you want Janome. Yeah, let me show you. So anyway, I don't have that. Um, mostly because uh, I set low expectations. <laughs> so you guys are pretty forgiving. <laughs> I don't fiddle with it. I'm like, hey, this is what we're doing. Oh, I got to make that bigger down here. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, uh, Alda, come up here to your preferences, that little yellow folder. Okay. And where it says hoops in the environment, um, format where it says PES, drop it to the JEF right there. And that will give you your hoops that you can set. Okay. I hope that's what you're, and then just click, um, okay, or apply or whatever. Click okay. And that'll, then you can pick the one you want. And there's a whole bunch of them there. Okay. Well, that'll help. I hope. Now I got to go back to PES. I got to see what I'm doing. Okay. So let me know if that solved your problem. Okay. The complainer was like a grocery store trying to sell lawnmowers to their customers. That's not what they came in for. <laughs> yeah. The thing with YouTube is, um, they, they want you to do the same thing over and over and over and over. Okay. And so that's one of the reasons, um, I, I really, you know, when I was toying with a name, I did not choose like Becky's sewing or anything like that because I did not, I didn't want to pigeonhole myself into a tiny niche with my name. Now I kind of have, I mean, it's obviously about stitching because you're doing something with thread, but then it's also pretty wide open that I'm not doing it by hand. It says power tools. So you guys know that you're getting something here. Okay. So, and I, and I make it so that it's either quilting or you know, I try to do my quilt piecing with you guys in the situation room so that whenever that happens, that happens. But when I'm going to be doing tutorials and stuff like that, I really upped the game and stitched it up to where, or bump stitched it up, bumped it up to where, you know, you're going to be getting some kind of technical above generalized, just quilt piecing. So thank you, Michelle. I have amazing viewers. She says, I have an amazing channel. I have amazing viewers. I really do. I can count the number of negative comments on one hand. And I've forgotten those. But I know they were there, but I don't remember what they were. The only one I remember is the one that said, um, oh, shoot. See, I can't remember it. <laughs> oh, I thought of the funniest thing, y'all. I hear from you guys all the time. Hold on. I got to have a swig of coffee here. I hear from you guys all the time. Those machines are too expensive. I can't afford this. I, you know, I don't have a lot of money. I can't afford blah, blah, blah. And not all of us have the money and, you know, and whatever. So I want to offer you a little piece of advice. And this is tangible advice. Okay. There's three ways that you can solve your problem. Number one, you can get a heck of a deal on something when and if you can find that. And in that light so much more in Austin the couple that owns it is retiring and everything on their site I think is half off 
and they are getting rid of some expensive machines and it might be worth your while if you are so inclined to hop on a flight and head over to Austin or drive over to Austin and go see what they got. So, um, yeah, we're all on a budget. I get it. I know. I get it. You know, so there's that way. You can get a heck of a deal on stuff. So much more in Austin going out of business. Check them out. Uh, I don't believe I've ever been there. I might. I can't remember. But I know they've got some long arms. I know they've got machines and they've got lots and lots of stuff. Thank you, Barb. You're sweet. Okay. The other way is to save your pennies and get what you get, right? Whenever you can get it, whenever you can afford it. That takes a lot longer, okay? The other way is to increase what's coming into the wallet. And have I got a tip for you. <laughs> Uh, comedian, Adam Carolla, listen to him all the time. He's got a podcast. He's a car guy. He hangs out with Jay Leno and he's a car guy. Y'all don't listen to that if you don't like foul language. Okay. Cause he's a comedian and he says what he says. So don't, don't go listening to him. Cause I recommend it. If that foul language offends you, don't listen to that podcast anyway. So, um, he's a car guy. I mean, this guy's won Le Mans. It's cool. Anyway. So he used to do Love Line with Jimmy Kimmel and um, he did Dancing with the Stars. He's been all over in the industry for a very long time. But anyway, so he owns almost all of Paul Newman's, if not all, of Paul Newman's race cars. Yeah. So he's going to be in Reno March 30th, 2024, with Paul Newman's daughter doing a car show. So that place is going to be crawling, crawling with men with money. <laughs> if you're looking for a way to increase your cash flow into the house so that you can afford a luminaire or a 10 needle, you might want to run out to Reno if you are available. I'm just saying it's an option. Okay. I'm just trying to give you guys options. <laughs> Oh yeah. Don't go listening to you. You're welcome, Julianne. Yeah. So I'm just trying to give you one more. Do not have to buy everything I talk about. No, you don't have to buy everything I talk about, but I'm just trying to help you guys out. Why do you think I took up golf? So I can meet the love of my life. <laughs> it's true. Haven't y'all ever heard the term marry up? I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> okay. Foul language is your love language. <laughs> then you'll like the Adam Carolla show. Oh my gosh. I'm just telling you guys, you know, just dress up really nice. You guys, those Ferrari women are out there wearing $8,000 jackets. Okay. It's just, if, if you're in for that, you know, you can, you can hook up with a poor man, a rich man, just as easy as a poor man. You just have to put yourself in the right location. That's my, you know what? I tell all young ladies that. <laughs> fish in the big fish pond. That's right. Absolutely. I'm just telling you guys, that's how. Jeannie, you know, run, girl, run. Go to Reno. And, you know, if you're not interested in it, just, you might hit the jackpot. Who knows? Or you might hit the jackpot twice. Hmm. <laughs> All right. That could be considered investing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. You wanted Alexis and your husband told you to go get a boyfriend. <laughs> you might want to fly out to Reno. Never know. Anyway. Okay. You like the bins behind me? This, uh, those are, um, those are from that place that send out that catalog all the time. You line. So I put my fat quarters in that. Those, those have all my, not all of them. They have a lot of my fat quarters. Check it out. So I label them by color. And then down below my fat quarters, I have what I call viable scraps. Those are pretty big. Okay. And then behind that, I got those bins at walmart.com. They're plastic, clear plastic. And I put everything in. See, that's my Lori Holt stash right there. 
but I put everything in uh, those clear bin. Oops, wrong way. And over here, behind there is the color wall. So there's the pinks and the whites. I've got some kits up there. And behind those fat quarters are the blues and the greens and the yellows and all of that. And there's my layer cakes. And there's my fat quarter bundles from Fat Quarter Shop. Y'all, my stash. It's crazy. So you weren't expecting that tip, Vicki? You never know what you're going to hear at a sewing retreat, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have to stay organized. My brain doesn't function well in clutter. So I have been ruthless. Any updates on Sunny? I have not heard any. Um, I didn't get a text from her. I think maybe I got a text from her Saturday morning. Yeah, she's, she's pretty sick. You guys, she's pretty sick. So <laughs> Michelle says she's been married 50 years. Once is enough. <laughs> Don't blame you. Yeah. Just trying to throw out options, y'all. You know. <laughs> this is crazy, isn't it? This is crazy. Six grand on a purse. Are you serious? Wow. Hey, you do you, right? That's cool. If you've got that kind of money and that makes you happy, you do you. I like buying sewing machines. That's just me. That's it's fine. I'm not judging. I think it's insane, but I'm not judging. You know, I wouldn't do it. That's fine. You do you. That's cool. I know. Right. Can you order the fabric of the old trailers and bicycles or is it available in the subscription only? Billy Lou, check out uh, Creative Notions Quilt Shop and see if she has any yardage of that. She might. She might have some left. And if you don't see it online, give her a call. Yeah. $60 on a purse is too much. You know what? One of y'all sent me a little wallet. Just a little tiny wallet. Was that you, Michelle, that did that? It's a little tiny fabric wallet. It has a zipper pouch on the back. It had a little pumpkin charm on it. And it holds credit cards and stuff. I carry that. I've carried that now for two years. I love it. <laughs> Don't want to break in another one, Jane. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are hilarious. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Hey, I've got to get stitching on this. Um, I got to get this binding on. This is driving me crazy. Yeah. Michelle says her stash is 20 times mine. So I have been really ruthless when it comes to going through my stash and looking at stuff. Y'all, I give away so much stuff. A uh, lady came and visited from Australia and she can't get a lot of stuff over there that we have here in the States. So um, I gave her a lot. And I'm like, if it'll fit in your suitcase, take it. Because I have the bins that I have underneath my long arm here. Most of that is filled with stuff, you know, because I get stuff in from vendors all the time that want me to promote it or whatever. And that's fine. But I'm never going to use it, make it or whatever. And so I'm very real about what it is I'm actually going to make. Oh, if Valerie is watching, I found those other blocks. So. Um, Anyway, she's going over to Fiberworks today, the quilt shop in McQueenie. And uh, I ordered the laser light that for the, the laser light for the handy quilter fits on the King quilter too. So I ordered that and it came in. What kind of thread do I piece with? Oh, y'all piece with. Okay. Okay. This Hi, Valerie. Yeah, I found all those blocks. They were hanging on the quilt rack. What do I call the con kind of container that has all the fabric in it? That is from Uline. It's U, the letter U, L-I-N-E. And it's, when you go on their site, look at bin storage unit, okay? It's not cheap. You don't have a heart attack. I spent about $700. 
on that. And it's double sided. And the expense wasn't so much the frame where it rolls around, but the the clear bins. I wanted the clear bins. Clear bins are expensive. So what you can do is you can go to Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight has one that's lots, lots less, but they only have the yellow and the blue bins and that hurts my eyes. So I wanted the clear bins on that. So yeah, Uline is good, but they're, they're not, they're not cheap. Yeah. Now the clear bins, see these bins have to, they have a little uh, ridge in the back that grips onto the, the thing that rolls around. I'll show you guys. Northern Tools has the bins too. Okay. Yeah. So this thing, I've got the wheels that move all the way around so I can turn it. Okay. This thing rolls all over my sewing room. Don't look at this. This is a hot mess. But this is like Christmas, Easter, Valentine's, patriotic, men, you know, men fabrics, that kind of thing. So I, I like everything in my room on wheels. And then... I'll show you back here is um, these are my bins with my clear stuff. I mean, I'm sorry, the clear bins, blue, brown, gray, um, then my greens and yellows and that kind of thing all the way up. And then down here, these bins have tech stuff in it. And there's my Villa Rosa designs binders right there. So I just, uh, I have to have everything on wheels just to be able to move around. Yeah. See, this is always a mess. So I just try to cover it up. So you guys think I'm really nice and neat. <laughs> oh. That's how I keep my stuff straight. Yeah. But when stuff's everywhere, I mean, every night before I go to bed, I completely clean off my cutting table. I have to have it, everything put away. It just, my brain doesn't function well with all of the clutter. So yesterday after the live, I mean, it took me about 45 minutes to put everything away. So, um, oh, you like my hair? Thank you. You're sweet. So, yeah, I mean, I just have got to find it a home. It has to go somewhere because visual clutter just makes me crazy. But, um, yeah. Talk about Villa Rosa books. Where did it get the covers to put the patterns in? Kim, those are from, um, those binders are from Hobby Lobby. And they've got a whole thing where they keep all of their scrapbooks. And um, so usually it's from the paper supply company or paper source or something like that. I haven't been to a Hobby Lobby in a long time. I bought that online. So those, um, I'll show you guys how I keep those. It's a pretty ingenious deal. I didn't, uh, I didn't come up with this. Julie and Nicole at Two Chicks Quilting did it. So, oh. I got, a, I've got more to put in there. I need to do. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Okay. I just get one of these scrapbooks and this is the 12 inch. Okay. So in here I have my fat quarters. I put, I put, um, zoom in so you guys can see. This is the only way to manage these, um, these patterns as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Oh. So I put little section dividers. This is fat quarters. Okay. And you come in here and then it's got, these are four by six photo sheets. Okay. And I just put one pattern per deal per little section so I can see the front and the back to it. Okay. And then I've got another divider rack here for panels and projects. So this is, this is how I keep them. And then I label them the same way. This one on the cover on the end says fat quarters, panels, projects, and something just fell. Oh yeah. 
That's how I do it. And it makes it really easy to flip through and find what it is that will work with whatever I want. And it's just really the, I don't go to the point of alphabetizing because then you have to shift everything every time you want to put something in here, but it just works really well. Um, what I'll do is easy, even easier is I'll go into the uh, Villa Rosa Designs app, find what I want and then dig for it in my book. So, because odds are I have it. But what I do is you look, I look at the back of, like if, if I'm in the app, because they, they have a great app. You like being organized, you can't figure out how. One of the best things to do to get organized is to um, get rid of a lot of stuff. Don't, don't hoard. Yeah. So let me look for Villa Rosa Designs. Yeah. So Villa Rosa Designs has an app and you can download it from iTunes or your app store. Right. And if I go to Rose Cards, let me clear my filters and make sure. Okay. So they call them Rose Cards. Right. So there's an A through Z at the top and there's a little filter, right? over here. See that little filter right there? Okay. So let's say I've got a panel and I want to figure out what to do with the panel. I'll hit the filter and then you get a list of different stuff that you can get it with. So we've got new cards, fabric, you go down to fabric requirements. Go down. This is free. You guys, you go down to fabric requirements and here's panel right down here. See that? I helped test this app before they launched it. It was pretty cool. So then after I touch panel, I hit the filter again and all of the patterns that use a panel come up. Okay. And so I'll just, you know, scroll through and go, oh, there's some placemats. That's cool. Let's eat. I know I have that one. So I touch it and then I can see it, but you can't see how to make it and you can't buy it in the app. That doesn't, those aren't connected. But then you can go to their website and either download the pattern. You can go to VillaRosaDesigns.com. You can either buy the pattern, uh, download, or you can order the card. So either way, that's a really great way to do that. Oh, yeah, Jane, I used to have loose leaf uh, notebooks with patterns too. I couldn't keep them straight. I, I couldn't, I just could not keep track of them. So, so Kira wants to know if she needs, do you absolutely need Stitch Artist 3? No. And um, today's the last day for the coupon if you decide to take the, the leap on that. No, you don't. What you're going to experience with Stitch Artist 2 is that when you do overlapping pieces, you're going to have to go create, design, begin new design, and overlap them. And then it may or may not work not to have those final stitches underneath the top piece. The benefit of Stitch Artist 3 is when you do create outline, reconstruct outline, which you cannot do in 2, you can do it in 3, it just fixes everything. And it allows you to just put them all together at one time and go reconstruct outline and boom, you're done. You don't have to create design, begin new design. That was a pleasant thing I found out. I, I just kind of discovered that. Yeah. So I, let's see. How does there? Oh. So I uh, spent a lot of time this weekend working on doing the videos for Happy Halloween. And, uh, I did so many retakes. <laughs> <clears throat> I need to be more disciplined and just go through it one time without the camera on. But my brain, it's like, well, because I want to be efficient and come to find out that's not efficient at all. So my, you know, my brain is like, well, I can just go ahead and do this. What I end up doing is doing something and it does, it either doesn't work like I thought it would, or 
I mess up or whatever. And now I've got that whole piece on video on the chip. This is why I switched to doing lives. So I, I got that whole piece on the video chip. Then I need to have, make sure I do it with enough time to immediately, when I get done shooting, go in and edit that clip. Otherwise, two days later, if I go back and edit the clip, I'll, I'll just be sitting there doing my editing and everything's cool and I'm watching it go by and everything sounds right. And then I'll go, that's not right. Oh, right. That, that was a problem that went wrong. And then I have to sort through it and figure out what pieces went right, what pieces went wrong, cut those out, move this around, put that back. You forgot to say this, blah, blah, blah. It's like, there's a reason people on stage go to rehearsal. <laughs> there's a reason. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a reason. So I, I need to be more disciplined in that because sure enough, you try to do something and it doesn't work. So if you guys are jumping ahead on that, Oh, Keith is up. So I'm working, I was working on the ghost. We're going to do the ghost block first because he has the fewest pieces. Do you have to have more than essentials to get Stitch Artist 3? Jane, you can get Stitch Artist 3 all by itself if you want. No, it's, I recommend essentials, Stitch Artist 3 and Thumbnailer. Those three things... It's less than $1,000 for all of them, and you will be up and running. You will have everything that you need uh, to do what we're going to do. So um, that's my advice. Oh, I don't have the pieces in here because they're I left them in the scan and cut. Hold on. Yeah, here we go. See, this is what I'm talking about, figuring out it didn't work out the way I thought it would. Okay. Uh, for you guys who weren't here last week, save the date. Uh, there's going to be a sew and sale out of Galveston on Royal, the 4th or the 11th of 2025. I'll be on that one. Don't know. It'll be one of the Caribbeans, Eastern or Western. Don't know which. But 4 through 11 May, 4 through 11 May, 2025. Put it on your calendar. Save the date. Okay. So here's the ghost. Here's the ghost. This is like the lower body. See how there's no line across the top? It's open right there on the edge. Scan and cut doesn't like that. And I got a double line when I scanned it. And so I thought, oh, well, I'll just retrace them on regular paper with a number two pencil. And that worked out fine. I got a nice clean line. I got a nice clean shape. It worked out good. And, um, but then I thought, so the problem was this one I closed off. See, I closed that off at the top. So the scan and cut doesn't like open shapes, right? So I went ahead and traced it. And then I just drew a line with my pencil across the top. That worked fine. But then I thought, well, what if I just drew a line straight across on the original? Would that work? And it did. So I'm cruising along, scanning in these pages, talking to you, touch this, tap that, blah, 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 doing all that, scanning it in, pull it up in a canvas, and it's a hot mess. I'll show you what it looked like. Mm. And then I thought, what am I going to do with that? So I spent considerable time yesterday fiddling around with this. For those of you that are new, I'm talking about snaplique. That is my snaplique method. Uh, you can scan in a paper applique pattern into the Brother Scan and Cut, upload it to Brother Canvas, clean it up, and then I don't know who else is going to be on with me, Nancy. We haven't decided that yet. That's 14 months away. 
Aren't I enough? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's see here. There we go. All right. So here we are at, um, by the canvas. This is what I was working on yesterday. So here's what I'm talking about. Let me get this guy. Let's edit. So what happens, some of you are jumping ahead. I know you are. I've, I've seen you, uh, you're sending me pictures and whatnot. So what happens is because this is open, the scan and cut, then like open lines, see the double line it created? Because I told it outside only and I did not have a closed shape. It also gave me the words, which is not a big deal, but it closed it for me up here at each one of these. So it would cut out this teeny tiny little bitty strip. You don't want that, right? And so uh, let me go back to my projects. Let me close this. So what I did was, is I just, when I traced him and he comes up, came up fine, worked great. All you got to do is get rid of that line there at the bottom of the page. This is how simple this is. I'm giving you a quick lesson, you guys, super quick. Let me get this so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to grab uh, the one on the top and see, I, let me put this here. Did the same thing as I gave him a line at the bottom. All right. And then what you do is you just, this is a tracing, so they're not perfect. You just want to make sure that the line at the top of the page two, the, the, the bottom piece is inside of this. And then highlight them both, right click and weld. And there's your ghost. It works great. Yep. And you can see he is um, 10 and a half by 6.71. So um, he'll fit in an 8 by 12 hoop. And if you're doing the 6 by 10 hoop, you will need to stitch this main piece down with your domestic machine first. But then you'll be able to, uh, let me move him off. Yeah. Yeah. This is my final one. You got to mirror them. I mirrored everything, but you can get all of that on there and it'll all fit. You'll be fine. You can stitch. If you have a six by 10, you can stitch the rest of these down uh, by itself. So yeah, that's kind of what I um, spent yesterday doing was figuring out that uh, Tina, did I use my mat tray? Yeah, it works really good. So check this out. I did. Thank you. So what Tina's talking about is there are some uh, ingenious people who come up. Thank you for that mat tray too, Tina, because she gave it to me. She sent it to me. They've come up with these little trays that hook onto your scan and cut, either in the front or the back. Okay. And they sell them on Etsy. Oh, we got a newbie. Hi, Carrie. And um, thanks for joining us. So I found the seller because I thought, well, cool, I'll show this yesterday. And um, put a link to it below the video. And I was going to show it. We totally ran out of time. My microphone died and all that. But it's a good thing because the link that I put there is an affiliate link that I have to Etsy. And the vendor is not fulfilling that. Because uh, Betty Boop here tried to order it. I, I told her about it yesterday because you guys will buy them out. So I told her, I said, hey, you might want to get this because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it. And they sent her an email back saying that that came from an out um, off-site ad link and they won't fulfill them. They will only fulfill them if you go directly to their Etsy shop. And she has to wait 30 days since she's already been there one time. So... That's the reason we moved our store where we sell the seam rippers and um, the merch, the t-shirts and the iron-ons and all that. We moved away from Etsy 
uh, vendors cannot opt out of that. It's mandatory. Etsy takes um, quite a bit, almost half of the profit from the small seller with an affiliate link. So, um, you know, that's the way it is. That's, that's just how it goes. So no, I'm not going to be showing that you still haven't gotten yours. Well, you ordered yours probably directly from them. So, um, anyway, just FYI that Tina, that's why I won't show it because if I use my link, then they're not filling the order. So they have the option for that. Can I show what SA3 will do for the Halloween quilt? Oh, you bought them from Amazon? The paper that came in mine <clears throat> didn't have an Amazon store. It showed Etsy. <clears throat> so maybe Etsy put it on Amazon for them. That could be it too. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, um, I did a video, Sarah. I did a video. Uh, it was a situation room last week, and it says troubleshooting week, last week or week before. Troubleshooting overlap stitches in Stitch Artist or applique, <clears throat> something like that. Take a look at that. Just on my channel, go to the search or just search in YouTube, search troubleshooting overlap stitches applique, and it'll pop up. And that'll go through it. And I show the difference of what Stitch Artist 2 will do and how to overcome it and what Stitch Artist 3 will do. I show that. So. Okie doke. Yeah, it is weird, Tina. It's very weird. But. Yeah, Etsy is, um, you know, they, they kind of got you. They're a platform, and that's one of the reasons Shopify is so popular. So you made it to the live. Hi, Darlene. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hi, Sherry. You're here. Sherry Reveal, if you're here. You're probably not. You're in Vegas. Um, I got that pattern you sent me. Thank you. I appreciate that. So funny. <laughs> Frito is, like, well, she was in here until Keith popped in, got up, Keith got up. So she went to go hang with him. So my other dog uh, went over the rainbow bridge on Friday and it was a very, very hard weekend. And you guys, I was in the middle of doing, so her appointment at the vet was at eight o'clock Friday morning. And she was 17 and she was, she had arthritis so bad. She hardly ever moved and it was really sad, but so I had a live on Friday with Sew Machines Plus and I was doing okay about halfway through it and my brain went to my dog and I lost my train of thought and the, the last five, 10 minutes of that was a hot mess. <laughs> I felt so bad. I text Blaine Austin and I said, I'm sorry. I put my dog down a day and I'm, uh, it was hard, you guys. Yeah. And she, we'd had her 17 years. We've had her since she was a puppy. Yeah. You thought, you thought it was Sunday. You thought today was Sunday. Hi, Pam. Welcome to retirement. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for all your condolences. I appreciate that. I loved her. Yeah, I know. And Keith said Frito's our last one. I thought, well, okay. Well, Frito probably live another 10 years and the way my husband's going, he's not. So I, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Pam. That's sweet. Yeah, it was, it was hard. Friday was a hard day. It was, it was a hard weekend. So and we all go through it. You guys, we all do. I know. And this is really something. So Keith was on his way home from the vet with her because we have enough property here. We've got a little place out back by the blue bonnets for Harley. And, um, how is Frito doing without her? Jackie, she's, uh, it's only been a couple of days. She's coming into her own. She's never been allowed to hang with Keith. 
She's always hung out with me because Harley would not let her, would not let her hang out with Keith. So they would lay in the living room looking at each other and giving each other the stink eye, you know, that kind of thing. Harley was very protective of Keith. So now that, um, now that, now she's hanging out with Keith a little bit more, a lot more. So, and that's good. That's, that's the whole, I'm boring. I'm hanging out in the sewing room doing my thing and ignoring her. Right. But anyway, um, so Keith was on his way home from the vet and he got his Facebook memories popped up and it said your pets. And it took all the pictures he'd ever taken from like 2013 all the way forward the last 11 years. And it showed him pictures to music of Harley and blue. It was really, really neat. And he put that on his Facebook and he said, I guess this is Harley saying goodbye. So, oh, it was so nice. I'm going to cry. Yeah. But that was, that was really cool. So does Frito need a chicken buddy? Oh no, Marilyn. <laughs> no, no, no. That'll be a chicken dinner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know you guys. It is so hard to put down our fur babies. So we lost Blue this time last year. She was 15. She was a little bit bigger. And so we lost her this time last year. Uh, the 22nd will be one year. And then Harley this month. March has been tough, you guys. I had a friend pass. So it's it's tough. Yeah. Anyway, y'all didn't come here to be sad. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Um, am I going to get another dog? I would love to. Yeah. Um, the, the thing with the Australian cattle dogs, uh, they like, they're loners. This, you know, Australian cattle dogs can have more Australian shepherd in them or more dingo in them. Generally, the cattle dogs will have a little bit more dingo and they're not very sociable animals and they get very territorial. So she would probably not handle another dog very well. So I don't, I, we won't get another dog while she's here. I like dogs cause I want a dog to bark. That's their job is to bark. Right. So, and just be a good companion. And that's, I love it. That's all I need. So, but uh, yeah, you know, that it's not like, they're not like pack animals. They don't, they don't, they don't care for other dogs. So yeah, you know, Harley enjoyed being an only dog too, but we always had other dogs. And so we let the old dog be alpha until the other. So we treat them first and feed them first because when we had blue, we, st she was also an Australian cattle dog. And when she came to us, you know, just, we didn't even really think about it. We started treating her first and, and feeding her first because she was more aggressive than Harley was. Well, then she started being mean to Harley. So we had to change that around and make sure we treated Harley first and fed Harley first, said hello to Harley first. And then, and it was, you had to do that. Otherwise the dynamics were, yeah, it was weird. <laughs> Frida loves her hugs. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. So. Yep, those Australian cattle dogs, they can be uh they can be pretty vicious. They're cousins to the um what do you call it? Blue healers. They're cousins. I'm going to put this on. I got to have my ruler base on. There's Frida. Were your ears burning, girlfriend? We were talking about you. Come here, baby. They want to say hello. They want to say hi. Yes. Hello. You're a good girl. Yeah. I have got to get stitching on this. Instead of sitting here BSing with you guys all morning. I put my, uh, I put my bindings on, on the long arm just cause I don't have time. Oh, Sandra, thank you for the super sticker. You're very thoughtful. I appreciate that. More fabric. Yes, very sweet. Because you know I need more fabric, right? 
<laughs> I already had the binding made up for this. And let's see. You can start on the side anywhere. I've got my uh, groovy long arm binding ruler. Okay. That's what I'm using. And it's got a groove in the back of it here. Groovy long arm binding ruler. And you just put the fold in the groove like this. These are on our store site, powertoolswiththreadstore.com. So the groove, it snugs up. See on that? And see how the edge of the binding sits exactly at the edge of the foot? So you just run the edge of the foot right along in your quarter inch right there. Pretty cool. Pretty slick. Let me move this cord so I don't run into issues here. I need to get that out of the way is what I need to do. Hold on here. Don't you know I ran out of backing? Jeez. If it could go wrong, it did go wrong, y'all. Okay. Put this up. And I'm going to loosen that. I'm going to loosen this up here. Put this down. Nope, not that one. I got all these little ratchet deals. I need to get to the middle of the side over here. There we go. That'll work right about there. Okay, put that down. Tighten it up. There we go. There it is. Awesome. I'm on 12 stitches per inch. You don't even need pins. This is so cool. I have a very close up video showing how to do this. So raw edge to raw edge. Okay, let me bring this over. I've got my ruler base is on and I have switched out to the sure foot. The sure foot is by Handy Quilter and it is, I want to show you guys, this is pretty neat. I mean, you don't have a long arm. Just, you're just watching. Something to do, right? So see how tall that is? That's called the sure foot. And you need that so that your ruler doesn't hit the needle. That's what you need that for. So I'm going to start back as far as I can up here. I'm going to leave, I don't know, 12 inches or so on a tail. And I'm just placing raw edge to raw edge. Like this. All right. A little needle down, needle up. Pull up that bobbin thread. If I can get it. Yeah. I have this. Now I got it all tied up in there. See what I did? I hate that. I do that all the time. Okay, that'll that'll work. It's fine. Let me put this on. I can't put that on. I'll put this right here. So just put this right here. I'm gonna move this over to the edge. Like I know what I'm doing. Hold on. Right there. I want them both through the foot. There we go. That's what I've been trying to do. <laughs> okay. This is the first time I've used this ruler with this sure foot. Oh, yep, it's going to fit perfect. All right. So I just place the binding. Back out a little bit here. Okay. So I'm just going to place the binding right on the edge of the quilt. And 12 stitches per inch. I'm going to go.
This is so much better than manhandling this quilt at the domestic. So much better. Oh my goodness. I got a perfect quarter inch seam here. I love this. Then I just come off the side and stop it. I'm going to go all the way around. I'm not going to do side to side. Let me move this. I got a ratchet on that's not letting me move. There we go. You never know what you're going to see here, you guys. Just place it right on the edge right there. How cool is that? Is that cool or what? Love it. Yep. You got it now? Yeah, that's how that works. Very, very cool. I came up with that ruler, you guys. Designed it myself. And the guy who um, is my repair guy for the machines, Jason, he made this on his uh, CNC machine. Or he's got some kind of laser cutter or something. But he made these. So um, he even put my little logo on there for me. Because he's got that laser. You see that? Can you see? There's my logo. Pretty cool. And this new version has 45 degree angle marks. So that when you get down to the corners, you can uh, place it where exactly where you need to go to the side and just off. You know, so you'll place the, I'll show you. Pretty neat. If you're a long armor, so the whole point of doing this is because I am lazy and I don't like to manhandle these quilts at the domestic to put the binding on. Now I have to finish it at the domestic because, you know, you're sewing it, you got to wrap it around and sew it and all that. But to put the binding on on the top, I don't, I don't like doing that. Okay. And so I was like, there's got to be a better way. And I came up with the groove to hold everything in place. And uh, now it, this only works with two and a half inch strips. But the other thing is, if you're a long armor that you long arm for other people, you can make this thing pay for itself. You know, I would charge $25 to put the binding on. If I was long arming for other people, I would say, hey. Do you want me to put your binding on for you on this king size quilt? It's going to cost you 25 bucks. I would pay that all day long or $20 or whatever you want, right? But that way, you know, you make it worth their while and make it your worth your while. And so now they're going to get a quilt with the binding already on and then they can take it home and hand bind or whatever they want. But it pays for itself that way. So this is an additional tool that you can add on as an option for sales if you are a long armor for other people. So. Yeah, I'm just like, this has, I got to find some way to do this better, faster, leaner, meaner, right? Could you leave your needle down in the fabric and roll your quilt? I could. Yeah, and I usually do. Like now, okay, I'll put needle down. Yep. Don't, I didn't want the whole stitch, half a stitch. There we go. 
Yeah. Okay. Let me do this so I can go across the bottom. Okay. So then, oh, get down here to the corner. This corner of the quilt was not straight. So I did some line markings on it earlier with a friction marker to get it straight. So I need to go right about there. Follow the pink line down. So I'm, I'm coming off the fabric just a little bit. Okay, so there's my 45 in, 45 degree mark that I marked on the quilt already. So now I'm going to take my ruler. I've got the 45 right here, and I'm just going to put it right with the bottom edge of the quilt and go off. Okay, so that gives me my 45, and that's perfect. And I'm going to stop it, and then I just push it up out of the way. I'll bring it back and just leave myself some extra thread right there. That is eventually going to be cut off. So I've got some looseness now and I can lay this out. And then I fold it back over just like at the domestic. That one's not good. I need my little template. I don't have my template with me. It's over on the other side of the room. So that's how I do that. And I can sit here and do it, which is cool. Yep. Oh, guys, we're past an hour. My goodness. Yeah, so I've got those rulers in um, powertoolswiththreadstore.com if you want to give them a try. I think you'll like it. If you are a long armor, it'll pay for itself. So um, besides, you know, and then you've always got a perfect quarter inch seam and you're not doing this and shoving it around and pulling up an ironing board and trying to get everything, hold the weight of that quilt. Hate it. Then after that, I will, um, I take my handy quilter batting scissors and I'll cut not the bottom edge of the quilt, but I cut into the sides all the way up to the edge of the quilt top and then cut up the top, up one side. I just go back and forth. So I'll cut this side, cut that side, go up. But I always leave this piece here on. And then I roll the quilt and cut up the sides, roll the quilt, cut up the sides. When I get to the top, I go ahead and cut right on the top and cut the top off. Then I loosen all the ratchets and pull the quilt from the back all the way over. So I'm using the weight of the quilt to hold the bottom together. And then I just cut it off at the bottom. And that way I'm trimming the quilt while it's on the long arm frame as well. So um, that's just a, uh, that's how I roll. All right, you guys, this has been fun. Thank you so much for joining me. If you caught the replay, I appreciate you spending your time with me. Um, you guys just go ahead, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you later. I'll see you tomorrow morning. You guys have a great day. Talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.